Don't buy the iPhone 16, wait for the next iPhone instead. No, not the iPhone 17. Instead, wait for what may possibly be Apple's best value proposition ever for the iPhone. The iPhone SE 4. The iPhone SE 4 is set to be the biggest update ever to the iPhone SE. Every single generation of iPhone SE has followed the same philosophy, old phone, new chip, and that's kind of what the iPhone SE 4 will be following. While the OG iPhone SE was based on the iPhone 5S design, and the iPhone SE 2 and SE 3 were based on the iPhone 8 design, the iPhone SE 4 will jump all the way up to the iPhone 14 design. This means the iPhone SE 4 will be getting the all new flat edge design that started with the iPhone 12. It'll also be getting MagSafe, Face ID, and gestures. But unlike the iPhone 14, it will not feature a lightning connector. Instead, it'll be updated to USB-C just like the iPhone 15 and iPhone 16. Also unlike the iPhone 14 and even the iPhone 15, it'll replace the mute switch with the action button ripped straight from the iPhone 16. Up front, you'll find the same 6.1 inch OLED display from the iPhone 14, with all of the same specs as that display. This means that after 18 years, the iPhone will finally ditch LCD screens once and for all. However, while it'll be the same display, it won't be from the same supplier. While the iPhone's OLED displays have been manufactured by Samsung and LG for 7 years now, Apple has been eyeing one other supplier for a while now, BOE. BOE was originally eyed back in 2020 for the iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 mini, but BOE's panels didn't meet Apple's quality expectations. Then Apple reconsidered BOE in 2022 for the iPhone 14, and they passed Apple's quality expectations. But then BOE changed the design behind Apple's back, forcing Apple to drop them. Now BOE is being considered for a third time now for the iPhone SE 4. But why is Apple going for BOE rather than Samsung or LG? Well, it's because BOE's panels are significantly more affordable than Samsung's or LG's panels, which for a more affordable device like the iPhone SE, these displays are very enticing for Apple to use. Not only does the iPhone SE 4 look enticing on the outside, it looks even better on the inside. The iPhone SE 4 will be jumping from the A15 Bionic in the current iPhone SE all the way up to the latest A18. That's right, the same chip found in the iPhone 16. A chip that rivals the M1 chip from the Mac. A chip built from the ground up around Apple intelligence. And a chip that can play AAA class games from a device that fits in your pocket. Not only is the iPhone SE 4 getting the A18 chip, but it's also getting 8GB of RAM double that from the current iPhone SE 3, and the minimum amount required to run Apple intelligence models on device. Thanks to the A18 chip with 8 gigs of RAM, the iPhone SE 4 will be able to run the vast majority of Apple intelligence features, such as writing tools, priority notifications, Genmoji, Image Playground, and of course, the more personal version of Siri coming in iOS 18.4. And since the iPhone SE is launching early next year, the majority of these Apple intelligence features will have been rolled out and you'll be able to use them on your beautiful new iPhone SE on day one, unlike the iPhone 16 launch back in September. You're basically getting the full suite of Apple intelligence features on the iPhone SE, except for the new visual intelligence feature, as the iPhone SE 4 won't be getting the new camera control from the iPhone 16. But apart from that, it's the full set of features. But now, the elephant in the room. As you may have noticed, this device only features a single camera on the back. But this is one thing that makes this device special. 
By compromising on this camera, Apple can amp up just about every other part of this device to the extreme. And even though it's just a single camera, it's still an incredible camera. We're talking essentially the same 48 megapixel fusion camera that you'll find on the iPhone 15 and iPhone 16, combined with the improved ISP in the A18. This 48 megapixel fusion camera can also act as a 2x telephoto without the need of an entire separate telephoto camera. So really, aside from an ultra wide camera, you're not really losing out on much by going for the iPhone SE. In addition, the iPhone SE 4 is going to be Apple's very clever guinea pig to test out something they've been working on for years, Apple's custom 5G modem. For years, Apple has been working on its own 5G modem to replace the Intel and Qualcomm modems they've been using for years. Every single iPhone from the iPhone 12 onwards has used a Qualcomm Snapdragon 5G modem. But ever since Apple's acquisition of Intel's modem business back in 2019, they've been working hard to bring their own modems to life. But they've had some major struggles along the way. Even Apple's Johnny Suruji mentioned that modems are a lot more difficult than SOCs. But modems are very difficult to do, correct? Extremely difficult to do, it's a whole system. But Apple is really close to the finish line with its 5G modem. And the iPhone SE 4 is set to be Apple's first device with this modem, but with a catch. This modem does not support millimeter wave 5G. A bummer, right? Well, not really. Millimeter Wave 5G is still not widely available, and even in the places where it is, it's only in the US. But when compared to the current iPhone SE, you'll actually find that this isn't a downgrade at all, because the current iPhone SE also lacks Millimeter Wave 5G. And really, what's the point of adding this feature to this phone that barely any people will end up using? especially on a mid-range device like the iPhone SE. This device is going to be the start of Apple's modem journey, as the iPhone SE 4 isn't going to be the only device coming next year with Apple's 5G modem. The new ultra-slim iPhone 17 Air will also be getting this same modem. That device needs to remove some non-essential features to get it down to a super slim design. And one of those things it'll be sacrificing is millimeter wave 5G, just like the iPhone SE. So while all of this sounds amazing, something you may be wondering about is battery life. The iPhone SE has been known to not have good battery life since the very beginning, but the new iPhone SE 4 will finally turn things around. The iPhone SE 4 will be using the exact same battery cell found in the iPhone 14, a massive leap in battery life over the current iPhone SE. Combined with the efficiency improvements made with the A18 chip, we're looking at some really good battery life coming to the iPhone SE. And with all of these features, iPhone 14 design, 6.1 inch OLED display, A18 chip, Apple intelligence, iPhone 14 battery life, Apple 5G modem, a single 48 megapixel fusion camera, USB-C, action button, and so much more, all offered for a price of just $499. That's $300 less than the iPhone 16. And really, what is there to lose? Sure, you'll lose out on Dynamic Island, the ultra-wide camera, and the extra benefits with that camera, about an hour or two of battery life, millimeter wave 5G, which 99% of people won't use, and the camera control. But are all of those features really worth an extra $300? To most people, probably not. And that's why this device is going to be the most important iPhone in years. Especially when looking at the competition and what they're offering for under $500, the iPhone SE 4 is going to be Apple's most competitive device in years, competing with hundreds upon hundreds of mid-range Android devices. This is Apple's chance to make a huge dent in this landscape of mid-range smartphones. Apple is out for blood with this phone. And you won't have to wait long for the iPhone SE 4. Apple is set to release this device in the first quarter of 2025. 
Though interestingly, mass production for this phone started last month in October, which actually poises a potential release date for before Lunar New Year 2025, meaning the iPhone SE 4 could actually come out in January, the first time that a new iPhone would be announced in January since, well, the first one. Though Spring 2025 is a more high possibility as well. Furthermore, Apple is planning a new base iPad and M4 MacBook Air, both of which also started mass production last month in October, meaning all three of these devices may launch at once. If you aren't in a rush to buy a new iPhone right now, I'd honestly recommend waiting for the iPhone SE 4 and seeing what it's all about, combined with the fact that the coolest Apple intelligence features aren't available on the iPhone 16 models as of right now, it might be worth waiting for Apple intelligence to be fully ready by spring of 2025, and at that point, why not wait to see what the iPhone SE 4 will have to offer for under $500. I have seen more people than ever disappointed in the iPhone 16 lineup, and for good reason. Not only is this a pretty minor year of upgrades, specifically for the Pro models, its highlight feature isn't fully available yet and wasn't available at all until just a few weeks ago, but if we take a step back and look at what's going to happen in the lower end of the market, it's really never been more exciting to see what's about to happen. Sometimes the most exciting phones aren't exactly the most innovative, and that's exactly what the iPhone SE 4 aims to be.